Hello everyone, it's Trina here from thereisacardforthat.ca and today I am going to be making a gilded butterfly encouragement card. Uh, so I'm going to start with a piece of Bristol Smooth and this is going to be a tall card. The finished card is going to be 9 inches by 4 inches and I'm just going to prep that with my powder tool. The stamp set for the butterflies I'm going to be using is from Urban Butterflies or sorry, no, <laughs> Urban Stamps, and it's called Butterflies. And the greeting and the sentiment that I'm going to use are from a recollection set um, from Color Splash, which is just a set from Michaels. So I'm going to stamp my greeting first, and it says, Spread Your Wings and Fly, which I thought was pretty good for for an encouragement card or it even could be a graduation card or a congratulations card on your new job or graduating high school, high school, college, university, trade school, whatever. Um, so I'm just stamping the two smaller butterflies from that set with Versamark ink and Versamark is a clear sticky ink that your embossing powder sticks to. The embossing powder that I am using today is the Sticky Embossing Powder from Ranger. And I'm stamping out three of the medium butterflies, then I'm putting the powder on so I can see where they are. And then I'm going to stamp some of the smallest butterflies. And so I'm just going to stamp those randomly over the whole thing. And then what I'm going to do here is I, I wised up and I got a piece of paper for underneath because I'm messy, super messy. I didn't realize that when I was doing it the first time. <laughs> I don't have coffee filters. I used to. I don't know. I don't know where they went. Um, so I'm just using a piece of copy paper and then I can funnel that back into the container and set that aside. So I'm just going to heat set that. And I found the trick to heat setting the sticky embossing powder is to get your heat gun good and hot and then as soon as it melts take the heat off of that because it doesn't stick as well if it's overcooked. So I'm using gold, radiant gold, yes radiant gold gilding flakes from Nuvo and these things are messy. Like they're lighter than air. <laughs> like I still, I still have them floating around and everything like that. So you just grab a pinch and push them down over the sticky stuff and you can see it's, it's, it's not a project for people who are like super neat and tidy because they, they get absolutely everywhere. Like I think I have them stuck to my socks and I was picking them out of other stamp sets later on and <laughs> I don't even know how they got there. Um, for wipe up, I use a dry Swiffer cloth. Um, just to catch it all. And I find that the no-name brand Swiffer cloth actually works better than the actual Swiffer cloth. And maybe that's because it's a little bit rougher, but either way, saves me a little bit of money. Uh, to burnish it down, I'm using a Faber-Castell stencil brush and I had trimmed the bristles shorter. So it was, the bristles were firmer. So I cut about half of them off and you just go in little circles over top of the gilding flakes and it kind of pushes it down into the stickiness and then you can funnel the rest back in like this container if you didn't know you'd think it was empty like they're so so light and they get everywhere I am going to be coloring these with zig clean color real brush markers and the colors that I'm using today are 023 scarlet red 070 orange and 052 bright yellow. I really, really like this combination, not just because I really, really like orange. Um, I find that they blend together really well. Um, I have water brushes. I don't like them. I think I have like four or five different brands of water brushes and I don't feel like I have a lot of control. So even though I like the idea of a water brush, I still go back to a paintbrush and water. Um, so I just add my darkest color closest to the body of the butterfly and just flick it out a little bit and then add my lighter color and then 
blend it out with with clean water like it doesn't you don't need a lot you don't need a lot of of water at all so if you start on the area that has not been colored and then kind of pull it out the water does its job and just pulls it out and you get this really really pretty watercolor look over top of it so I've actually had this card set up to do yesterday but I got so sick and I don't even know what from I don't know if there was something in the house or if there was a tummy bug or what it was but I I couldn't move like it was it was not fun it was not fun at all and of course when you can't do something that's when you want to do something like here I am lying in bed wishing that I could not feel feel pain at all my head was pounding oh it was just awful and all I wanted to do was go sit in my craft room which is like literally on the other side of my wall but I just I couldn't even stay upright it was being sick is not fun especially when there's no reason for it at all um so today feeling better yay then uh I was able to sit down and do this I actually should be preparing for for my daughter's like little mini birthday get together we're having some family over this evening for her birthday and yeah I felt like crafting instead so I've actually had the kids like cleaning up the house and sweeping and vacuuming and doing all of that stuff and tidying and organizing <laughs> while I'm down in my craft room just making cards because I missed out on yesterday so I'm just going to finish this last butterfly here and bring in the clean water close to the edges and then pull the color out and on Bristol Smooth the ink doesn't sink in as quickly so it works really well for this technique as long as you don't mind the mess from the gilding flakes going absolutely everywhere. This last butterfly or fourth butterfly, the middle butterfly, <laughs> it wasn't as colored as I wanted so I just added a little bit more. Uh, for the inside panel, actually doing an inside for the card, I'm going to emboss the medium butterfly in the lower corner and I'm just going to use the same gild, nope, the same embossing powder, not gilding flakes, embossing powder as I did for the greeting on the front. And then I'm going to set that with my heat tool. I like to use a powder tool, it just removes any static from the paper and little finger marks and stuff like that so that the embossing powder only sticks to where you want it to actually stick. And so I thought that this would be something a little nice on the inside. And then I'm going to put that away because I think I'm done with it, but I'm not. I'm going to grab another greeting that says, you are awesome from another of the recollection sets. And I'm also going to emboss that with the same gold embossing powder. And I was really lucky because I totally forgot to prep the middle part before I put the embossing powder and the Versamark on, but luckily nothing stuck to it. So that was... I was pretty good because it was right about here where I was like, oh, whew, that was really lucky. Because, <laughs> like, I didn't want to have to redo the panel again. It's a lot of measuring. So I'm just making sure that the front is dry. And so I've got my card base and I had pre-folded it because I needed to measure it. And this will actually fit in a legal-sized envelope and not cost additional postage. My layering piece here is going to be... Um, just a black piece just to kind of make those butterflies really pop and uh, it's actually during this card um, right after I finished this that uh, that tape runner finally ran out so I did dig out another one because I have a whole drawer for them I'm not even kidding I have a whole drawer full of adhesive and so put the panel on the inside and then I'm going to use some half inch score tape for the back of the Bristol panel. Now I'm using the score tape because when you use water on not watercolor paper, it can warp. And I mean, I don't, I didn't use a lot of water. Like I didn't like drench the, the paper or anything like that. Um, but between the heat embossing and then using the water, 
Like it's not, it won't stay super flat. It just, it just doesn't. So I'm using some super, super strong tape to add that right to the front. And then I think I'm done, but I'm not done. If you've watched my videos, you know at this point, I'm not done. It's not gonna happen. So here I'm actually just off camera digging out some enamel dots. Um, nope, sequins, sorry. Um, so I'm going to be using the six millimeter and three millimeter sparkling clear sequins from Pretty Pink Posh. And I'm using my glass and bead slick surface adhesive because I'd mentioned before, I, I don't know what's wrong with me. I can't make the multi-medium matte from Ranger work with sequins. I don't know, maybe it's too cold in my basement and it changes the formula or something like that. And so I'm using the little three millimeter ones now, which are super tiny. You don't think that three millimeters is super tiny until you're trying to glue on a sequin. <laughs> so I grab my reverse tweezers and that, that works out better for me here. <laughs> so I'm just adding a scattering of them all over the front of the car just to give it a little bit more shine because gelding flakes just isn't enough, right? So I have those on there and why not? Let's add one more. Um, so that's going to be that. And then that is the card for today and the inside of the card. And it's all pretty and I haven't decided who I'm going to give this to or anything like that yet. Um, I did notice on the front there was a little bit of orange. So you just take a clean wet paintbrush, add a little bit of water and then dab it off. So thank you so much for watching and thumbs upping and subscribing and commenting. I truly appreciate all of them. If you haven't done those things, please consider doing them. It means the world to me. I will have links to my blog and Facebook down below. Bye.